Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to connect to OpenAI API and then have it return JSON object or objects that you can then use within your bubble application to do really, really powerful things. Um, you can build whole AI powered applications using this method. And it's a lot more powerful than just kind of sending a piece of text to OpenAI and having it return a piece of text, which is the standard default way of connecting to OpenAI. So let's dive in. First of all, um, let's look at the API connector. And I already have the connection to OpenAI set up. You can see that I have two headers, the authorization header with a token, and then the content type header with a format application JSON. That's just the standard format that you want to put. And then I have a call to the completions, chat completions endpoint. The chat completions endpoint is just the endpoint that you use to use the um, kind of the chat GPT API, the one where you give it a prompt and it returns a response. So there's a reference and you can see how that's set up. But um, we're only using three parameters here. We're using the model parameter. So the first parameter is the model. Um, we're specifying that we want to use the GPT three and a half turbo model. That is the chat GPT model. It is um, cheaper and faster, but less powerful than the GPT-4 model. Um, then we have the temp parameter. That's the temperature uh, here. And the temperature is just how random do you want the results to be? The lower the value, the less random, the higher the value, more random. And I think they range from zero to two. So I'm using 0.8. I think that's kind of the default, but you can also play around with this value if the results you're getting are not quite what you want. And then you send it an array of messages. And in this case, I'm only giving it one message. And my message is write a poem about no code. So let's initialize the call. And it returned a call successfully. And we can see that there's a poem in here that's nested within the JSON response. And here it is. And note where it's nested. So it's under the choices array. And then within the choices array, it's under the message um, object and the content field of the message object. We'll need to remember, remember that because we'll need to reference that field. So we're going to save it. Okay. Um, I've exposed this parameter as being public, not private, so that I can actually go ahead and build a little application here to do the same thing that I just did within the editor. So first I'm going to have a multi-line input. This is where the prompt is going to go. Then I'm going to have a button to run the prompt. Then I'm going to have a group of type text where I'm going to display the output and I will need a field, a text field or a text element, I guess, to actually show the text. And so when somebody clicks this button, we're going to do a completion and we're going to make sure that the prompt is whatever the user typed in in the multi-line input. So let's preview this. Type in a prompt, write a poem about, I cannot type, no code. Okay, I'm going to run it. And it did not work, probably because I didn't actually set up a display data action. That's important. So we're gonna, and this is where it helps to remember where the response was stored. So it was under the choices array, first items, message content. So let's give this another shot. Okay, much better, we have our poem. So that's great, but that's a very simple flow. Text input, text output. What if we want something more complicated? So instead of write a poem about no code, let's say write three poems about no code, each one with a title and text. So more complex prompt, let's see how it does. Okay, it returned me three poems about no code, each one that has a title. But this is still, I can't really work with this in Bubble easily because let's say I wanna now create an object in Bubble for each one of these poems. I have to somehow extract the name and I have to extract the text and 
it's complicated to do it that way. And there's a much better, much simpler way. And the way is to get OpenAI to return to you a JSON object that represents these results instead of just a single text string. And there are two things we have to do to do that. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to, um, well, let's, let's look at our uh, reference and we have to use this new parameter called response format. It's new because it was added in the past few months. So this is, um, they didn't used to have this, but now you can actually explicitly tell OpenAI to return the results in a JSON format. So you just have to add this parameter, I'm add it here, response format, and they have to set it to this value that they tell you to set it to, which is this object here. So I'm gonna go back and set it to that and add my comma. And that's the first thing you have to do. The second thing is it actually tells you here, when using JSON mode, you must also instruct the model to produce JSON yourself via system or, syst or uh, user message. So that means when I write my prompt, I have to tell it to use JSON. So I'll say, write me three poems about no code. Return the results as a JSON array called poems in each poem object include the following parameters. I want to get really explicit as to how I want my JSON object formatted. So the first parameter is title, the title of the poem, text text of the poem. Okay, so um, why am I being so explicit? Return the results as a JSON array called poems, um, and then I'm specifying the parameters for both of the fields that I want to return. Because if I'm not explicit, OpenAI is going to have to make up some values, some um, values for the names of the array, some values for the names of the fields. And if it makes them up, they might be different every time you run the call. And if they're different every time they're on a call, you won't be able to build logic that relies on them being consistent. So you have to specify it. So I've specified it. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this because I know that when I run this, it is not going to work. And I'll explain why. So let's run it. It didn't work. Um, and let me actually, I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to paste it in as the initial content of this input so that I don't have to paste it in every time. It's just gonna be there always and I don't have to worry about losing it. But why didn't it work? It didn't work because this prompt here has a whole bunch of special characters. It has quotation marks and it has new line characters. And neither one of those can be used as part of a JSON object because those characters get pasted in here and then it breaks the format because JSON is expecting quotation marks as part of the object itself, but not as part of the content of one of the fields. And uh, new line characters are not supported by JSON objects. And so you, ha you have to, what's called escape special characters, which is just means substitute them with characters that represent them. So for example, a quotation mark becomes a backslash quotation mark and a new line becomes a backslash n. Now, you don't actually have to know these things or remember them because Bubble makes it really easy for you. All you have to do is you have to go in here and you have to use an operator called JSON safe. Format is JSON safe. So you just add that here and that's gonna add all those special characters. It's gonna take out the quotation marks and update, take out the new line breaks and update them with special characters. Um, and then the other thing that we have to do is when you use this operation, Bubble actually returns the results in quotation marks. So the results have quotation marks on either side. That means that we should also take out the quotation marks from here because we don't want to have two sets of quotation marks. So we take them out from here and then let's refresh and run the call. Okay. So we have our JSON object response. In it, there's an array called poems. In it, there are three objects for each of the poems, each one with a title and text. It's exactly what we wanted. So now, 
um, we are halfway there, but we're not all the way there because this is still just text. It's not something that we can actually use in Bubble to create objects or format things or anything like that. And the reason it's text is because when we receive this value from from OpenAI, it's a JSON that's within another JSON. So OpenAI gives us back the JSON of the response, which is um, which is in here, and like this thing here. But within this, there is also another JSON of this. And because it's nested within another JSON, Bubble doesn't think it's JSON, it just thinks it's text. And so that's why this is just text. We need to now convert it to be a JSON object. And we're gonna use a, a little bit of a hacky approach, but one that works really well. We're gonna actually use Bubble's own API to add a JSON header to this text so that Bubble understands, oh, this is a JSON object. So how do we do that? Let's go to our backend workflows. And we're gonna create a new API workflow. We're gonna call it convert JSON. We're gonna add a single parameter. We're gonna call it input. And now we're gonna add a single action, which is return data from API. We're gonna set this up as other content type type in application JSON here, and we're gonna reference input. So what does this do? This receives the input text of the JSON and then returns it right back. So it just takes it in and it returns it right back, but it attaches this header of application JSON. And by doing that, Bubble will see the header and be like, oh, this is a JSON object, it's not just text. So we've set up this endpoint, now let's connect to it. So we'll go back to our API connector and we're gonna add another API. I'm gonna call this one, this app. And it's gonna have two headers. One's gonna be content type application JSON. That's just always there. And one's gonna be our authentication. So that's gonna be authorization and then bearer. And we need our token, which I can get if I just go to settings. And I've already created a token here. So I'm gonna copy it. Hopefully it copied it. And then I'm gonna to go to plugins and I'm gonna paste it in. It did not copy it properly. Let's go back. Okay, hopefully that copied it properly now. Okay, that looks more correct. And then my API call is gonna be um, convert JSON. It's gonna be a post. For my URL, I just need to get my base URL here in the API tab. So I'm gonna get my base URL and I'm gonna paste it in here. And then I need my actual API workflow name, which is convert JSON. So I'm gonna copy that, and paste that in here. And now I need to add my body, which is gonna be, what, what do we call this thing? We called it input. Okay, so we need to make it be input. And it's gonna have some text in it. And we're gonna expose that text so that I can use it in my workflow and we'll call it input JSON. Okay, so, and we're gonna uncheck this private value. So we need to initialize this call. To initialize this call, we need to give it a JSON that is like the JSON that it will receive when it's live. So the JSON that we need to give it is basically this JSON. Um, I, cannot, I can't seem to copy it right now because of this bar, so I'm gonna just refresh the page then rerun the call. Then I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna run it through here. But I can't just paste it here because it's the same issue as we saw before. If I paste it here, it's not escaped. It has quotation marks, it has new line characters, so it's gonna break. So we need to escape it. Because we're doing this in the editor, we don't have that, we don't have access to that format as JSON safe operator, but we can just Google a um, escape JSON tool and use this tool. So all we have to do is just paste it in here, escape JSON, copy the result. And then we're gonna go back here, we're gonna paste it in, and we're gonna initialize. And look at that, it worked and returned the results as a nice JSON with, a lit, with an array and two parameters. So we're gonna save that. Okay, so now we have our API set up. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our page and 
uh, now we're going to use that action um, to display the list. So we're gonna get rid of this group because it's just a single group, but instead we actually want a list. So we're gonna use a repeating group. And the type of content that it's gonna be is gonna be this new thing that we just initialized. It's convert JSON or convert JSON poem. We're gonna set it to convert JSON poem because we want each cell to be the poem itself. The convert JSON is the tech is the um, response that surrounds the poem, but that we want the poem. So we're gonna select the poem and then we're going to add the text or the title of the poem, and then we're gonna add the text of the poem. And we're to further differentiate them, we're gonna make the title be bold, just so that you can see that. And that's one of the things that you can do if you are using a JSON object, is now each thing is a separate field, so you can do um, you can do formatting changes to them. You can save them in the database separately. You can do math operations on them if you're working with numbers. You can do all kinds of things. And so I'm gonna format them differently. And then here, I'm gonna add an action of um, display list in a repeating group. And that's gonna be my repeating group. And here, I'm gonna use data from an external API. That's not quite correct. It's not an external API. It is an internal API because we set it up in our app itself. But we're using the API connector to connect to it, and it has Bubble has no idea that it's an that it's just connecting to itself. So it's just labeled as an external API. But it's actually an internal API. And we're going to select this app, convert JSON, and here we're going to link to our JSON from the OpenAI call. So that's once again choices, first items message content and then we remember we have to escape this so we're gonna do um, formatted as json safe and then here we need to say convert json's poems so um, what it's doing now is this first doing a call to open ai and then it is OpenAI is returning that JSON string that Bubble thinks is text, but then it's sending that text to the um, API that we've set up within this application, and it Bubble is adding a header to that text, which makes Bubble recognize it as a uh, JSON object, and then it's displaying the JSON object within this uh, repeating group, which has separate fields. There's one more thing that we have to do, which is in our call to this app, the call to convert JSON, we still have to um, get rid of these quotation marks because remember, we're using that formatted as JSON safe operator and that adds quotation marks. So we don't want two sets of quotation marks. So we have to um, get rid of these. So let's go back. Let's refresh. And let's try it and cross our fingers that it works. There we go. We have our three poems. Each one has a title and a text. And um, now you can do whatever you want with these. You can save each one as in the database as a separate object. You can, um, you can display them differently as we're doing here. And you can do things that are a lot more complex than this. You can return objects that have hundreds of fields. You can return really complex nested objects for um, if you're building a more complex application. And um, the more powerful the model you use, the better uh, OpenAI is going to be at generating these objects. So GPT-4 is gonna be really, really powerful at generating pretty complex objects with nested structures. So you could have arrays within arrays within objects. I mean, the, kind of the, um, you can do a lot of things. You just have to specify in a very detailed and clear way in your prompt. So anyway, hope you found this video helpful and um, happy bubbling.